the dude. <laughs> Before we kick off, Franz and I would like to give a big thank you to all of you who enjoyed our latest edition of the Dawson Canal Expedition and supported our work, either through sharing the video with friends, subscribing to the channel or becoming a channel member and join our little white label community. Soon we will wrap up more member exclusive videos that will go in depth on planning an expedition like this, which will help a lot for those who want to dive in such a pike fishing adventure. In the recent adventure to the Dawson Canal, we used the new Hummingbird Mega Live in both forward and down mode. In this particular video, we want to focus on this new style of fishing that opens up a lot of possibilities, especially since the new target lock has arrived. Exciting stuff, yet we also understand that these live tech innovations isn't everyone's cup of tea. All we can say is, we respect that. We hope that everyone who isn't a fan of this technology also shows the same amount of respect to people that do use it. If you don't like to use technology in fishing, don't use it. It is fairly simple and we should avoid making our beloved hobby a never ending competition of who catches the most or which technique is superior to the other. Let's just enjoy ourselves out there. Enough ranting from me, this was just my two cents on the matter. Let's dive into the video. Good morning! We are out playing around with the new target lock from Hummingbirds. Um, we're gonna use that Mega Live in combination with, which essentially is like a steering engine which can automatically lock at a waypoint. And it has a cool foot panel as well, which allows you to steer the motor and freeze up your hands, which makes the pelagic casting a lot easier. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use the down mode to target Xander and Pike, and later on, forward mode, cast with all kinds of soft limits, Viper 24, some jerk baits, and potentially some other stuff as well. Cool that you were there grabbing for your headlight. <laughs> Pushing in the dark. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't even the biggest one we saw. No. We saw an even larger one on the on the left. But this one just came up right from the bottom and snatched the lure. Looks like it has already been caught once or twice. Judging by the jaw. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess it hasn't seen this monster slug before. Nice start the day off. Whew, they're cold again. You're free. Bye. Nice. Absolutely nailing it today. Just one single hooky of the trouble. Bye. 
That one was looking below the bait fish. Nice. Sweet. That was hunting the bait fish really close towards the bottom. And we kind of scared the school of bait fish away and then this one came up. So we got a couple of fish on the uh, monster slug. I'm gonna try and see if we can get them on a 20 centimeter scout shell. It's my favorite color. I mean, it's a bit funky. <laughs> Pink and blue and silver, but uh, did really well in Sweden. And there are already a couple of fish showing up on the sonar, so <laughs> let's get it into the water. This is literally 30 seconds after your release of the of the fish. This one was uh, Roman Palazzo. Sounds. He is on out. So, well, not really the monster we're after, but we are having so much fun. Really, literally catching one after another. We are mapping the area at the moment because we haven't really mapped this area in a long, long time. So I'm using the auto chart at the moment to get a good reading of where the depths are. And at the same time, I'm going to deploy target lock, a motorized control over your live transducer. Normally, it will be on a transducer mount or a transducer pole, and you need to steer it manually. But now, you can do it automatic. This is a foot pedal, but for the sake of explaining it, I will show you how you can operate it with your hand as well. Cool thing about the One Boat Network is that you also have the option to control it on your screen. What we have over here is a marker. This buoy over here and I'm gonna show you how it actually works because it doesn't fixate on uh, a fish but it does throw out a bunch of waypoints and keeps pointing the life transducer in that direction look at it like a flashlight it just keeps aiming the flashlight at a certain point thus if the boat starts drifting or when your engine is spot locked and then it starts to work its way against the wind, you will always have that little bit of movement and then you will lose the signal. And thus, you would normally need an extra hand to steer the transducer, one hand to cast, and the other one to retrieve. So that makes it fairly difficult. We got a buoy over here, and over here, you can see the probably chains or the rope from the, from the buoy. And I can lock it. I can press the lock button over here. I can press the lock button on the remote control. Now, when I start steering the engine, you can see that the target lock keeps the road of the buoy in place because it keeps steering in that direction. So if I find a fish on a drop off, you can imagine what that can do. Another cool feature is the sweep functionality. I've programmed this on my customizable button because this button is free to program to whatever function you want it to do. And what I usually do is just switch off my petrol engine control my, my old tracks, my trolling engine with the remote control. Start steering it around. I like to put it on autopilot. And then it starts to sweep around. I don't have to operate it manually. And when it starts sweeping around, left to right, from left to right. And once you start finding a fish, I pause the engine, I lock it, and then I spot lock the boat. Then the boat starts to position normally against the wind. As explained before, like with the buoy, it just keeps fixated on that specific point that you targeted. Thus, it frees up your hands. It makes your life so much easier when you want to do casting with life transducer.
Now, the target lock is from the USA. It's intended to put on a Ultrax motor. I don't think you can mount it on an Ultera. So that limits the options. I mean, if you want to do the vertical pelagic stuff that I'm doing a lot, having it on your trolling motor in the front might not be the ideal position. Um, it is the way it's intended, but if you want to use it with a tiller and mount it in the back, there are custom brackets available. This one is built by the guys from Elite Boats and it allows me to tilt it and also flip it in towards the boat. That allows me to transport it. I can leave it on the boat when I'm putting it in the garage or when I'm switching from lake to lake. Safely secured doesn't go anywhere. For me, operating a tiller, fishing a lot vertically, this is the most ideal position because I can do both casting and I can do the vertical stuff. Mounting it in the back, it's definitely possible for those tiller guys out there. So, we did some casting, but apparently the pike are not really into the, uh, the active uh, mode, as in they are swimming, but they don't like any speed in the lures at all. So we are uh, switching towards uh, Bananas. Bananas. So we switch to a more slow presentation. Put the transducer on down mode. You're gonna do some typical vertical slash pelagic fishing. It's not really pelagic. Most of the fish are close to the bottom anyway. Uh, and we spot out a couple of fish. So. Yep. Here it comes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and there's another one, a big one, close to it, so. The setup we're using is fairly simple. Just a single treble. We're using a BKK and then with a split ring, a swivel and a split ring. In the back of the uh, the soft plate, that's all you need. Fish after fish after fish. Ooh. That was a brutal tank. Nice. Ooh. Old warrior. Smash the, uh, the slug really nicely. So cool on the Mega Life. Let's get her back and uh, prepare for darkness, buddy. I think the murky water didn't really favor the casting for Pike, so we will pick that up in another session using the target lock and the Mega Life. But if you already want to see the forward mode in action while casting, you can check out the two videos that we left down in the description or check out the latest edition of the Dalsand Canal Expedition. Down mode slash pelagic worked really, really well. Especially since we only fished a couple of hours in the light. Now we can focus on the darker hours, but first we need to grab some warm food. Nice hot meal for us. Yuck. Do you like the weather, buddy? Not good. <laughs> it's gonna. It was gonna stay dry, but nah. The Netherlands. It never stays dry. <laughs> first fish. Oh, there he goes. Bye. Go on. It's first sounder. <laughs> Artful. Well, first fish of the darkness. Still walking into it. <laughs> Same fire tiger slug. Look at that. <laughs> well, we're looking for a pike that is potentially like twice or two and a half times the size of this one. Oops, okay. <laughs> wow. Oh. 
Oh, we got a nice Xander. Yeah. Guess the lure we're fishing with. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can swoop it out of the water like this. Yes. Nice. I gotta do some lens cleanings. Yeah, yeah, oh. Hoppa. Mm. It's one of the material that. As mentioned before. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Take small ears. This one was lurking at like. Uh, on the top of my head, like 7 meters of water. So not super, super shallow. Don't fresh around. But, uh, yeah. Mr. Z. Nice Zander. Cool fish. Fish number four in the dark. So it seems that the bite is now on. And the rain is coming down against as well. So. Well, the rain has finally stopped. That's a good thing. Currently trying to find some bigger fish. But um, it's not easy. Uh, we found a couple. But they are super, super picky. They, uh, they come swimming, following the bait for like a full minute, sometimes even two or three. And then they just they clock off. It's just it's frustrating, but fascinating at the same time. Uh, it's cold. It's gonna freeze starting tomorrow. Uh, and I must admit, my gloves during all the rainstorms that we had are pretty wet as well. It's not super comfortable at all. Sideswiped it first. Okay. It's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a line in its mouth. Man, did we have to suffer to get this one? Hell. Yeah, it's a big reward like this one that makes it all worth it. Wow, look at what a beefy fish! It's not really super long, but it's so beefy. Wanna go? Yes. Ready? Yeah. Nice one, buddy. What a fish to end the night with. After sitting in the rain for several hours, it felt like a well earned reward. We will do more videos with the Mega Life and Target Lock in the future, besides our regular work, obviously. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the winter cold while it lasts, as we will launch a couple of new videos very, very soon. See you guys.